Jane. Yeah. I have been playing Outcast A New Beginning. Lucky. Uh, which is coming out in March. I've uh, got a secret sneaky peek. And um, it's been fun, but it's also been educational. Now, as our resident astronaut. Ready? Brace. Oh. And. Stop. Whoa. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I think of all of us, you're the one most likely to end up stranded on an alien planet. Yeah, <laughs> that was what they voted me in my year. Yeah, like. that's what it says underneath your name. Um, so I thought I would offer you seven survival tips for when you're marooned on an alien planet, courtesy Ooh. of Outcast New Beginning. So if you're not familiar with Outcast, it's a game that came out in 1999, the original one, um, uh, on PCs, and it was a sort of really kind of revolutionary voxel technology, open world game, you know, non-linear, stuff that didn't really happen that often in 1999. Ulu-kai, what's that, some egghead word for... Holy sh**! What is egghead? And um, this new game sort of reunites the original team who made that game. Oh. And they create it with sort of modern sensibility. Oh, okay. So, um, the old gang back yeah, together. Yeah, getting the old gang back together, including like the composer and things like that. Damn. Now that's a change of scenery. Beautiful. The spirit is going to be there, but this is very much a modern game, not uh, not the old sort of... Voxels? Voxels, yeah. <laughs> voxels, the technology that died out pretty quickly. Oh let's be no, honest. the voxels! <laughs> Do you want your games to be more gritty in 3D? Then yeah, voxels are the thing for you. Whoa. Drop like that. Sure shouldn't feel like a million bucks. So in the game you play is Cutter Slade, same guy as in the first game. Cutter Slade, now yep. there's a name, he's game a, writers. He's, a, he's an ex-Navy SEAL, pretty pretty hardcore, um, and he's ends up marooned on this, this alien planet. Sort of teleported there, resurrected by some mysterious somewhat deities called the Yods. So that's how the game starts. So I thought I would present to you my seven tips for surviving on an alien world, uh, brought to you by Outcast A New Beginning and Outside Xbox. So supposing I can breathe the atmosphere. Yep, which is a big supposition. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's ignore that. <laughs> yeah. Assume Assuming I can your lungs breathe don't the pop out of your mouth. What's priority one for survival? Priority one for survival is making sure you can defend yourself, right? Okay, because okay. it could be a hostile world. You don't know yet. Obviously, all that may be available to you is a big stick. That might be a, a, a bit of a problem. But uh, certainly in Outcast New Beginning, uh, you do very early on get a sort of like arm-mounted shield that kind oh, of pops out, which is pretty stick. handy. Yeah, better than the stick indeed. Um, and a pistol. I guess you won't be needing this anymore, pal. Super, super useful. Um, the combat's quite sort of uh, action-packed, I think. You know, for, for a game that's sort of an RPG, essentially, um, it's got some pretty sort of like action-packed and snappy combat. Uh, but what I really like about the weapons in the game is um, they're totally upgradable, right? So like you will pick up new weapons mm -hmm. um, during the game, obviously, but you can also upgrade those weapons with what are called modules, right? So what happens is you um, pick up, collect nano cells, and what they do is unlock weapon module slots, right? So I assume the nano cells are sort of building a little extra bit on your gun that you can then slot something into. Um, so there's tons of these modules, there's like dozens and dozens of them. Um, and so this is very much a way that you can kind of tailor the game and the combat in particular to your own sort of taste. Um, I have a personal favorite and it is the module that turns your shots into sort of sticky grenades. <laughs> Fancy weapon module. Cool. So, um, you know I love a bit of explosive chaos. Um, and so you can be firing a pistol, and as you fire the pistol, these sort of sticky grenades are being fired out Sticky as well. grenades are the best grenades. They're the best kind of grenades. Change my I've mind. I've always said this. I've always said this. Um, but yeah, so they, that just, I mean, instantly you go from sort of just firing, you know, bullets, space bullets, I guess they, they'd be called. Um, 
uh, to sort of firing explosives and everything's blowing up and, you know, robots are going flying and things like that. The other benefit you have in combat, and this may not apply to you when you're marooned on, a, on an alien planet, but um, as Cutter Slade, you're the only being on the planet, I guess, that can revert, which is die, but then be resurrected, right? Which is very helpful in combat, particularly if you're not very right. good like me. So tip one, be immortal, be, be functionally immortal. Be functionally immortal. immortal. Yeah, yeah. That's a sub tip. That's like <laughs> that's like one B, I guess. Okay. After one A. Mike's tip for survival: yeah. don't be killable. <laughs> you get the good stuff from me. Uh, you leave these unidentified monsters to me. So yeah, I, I would say my first tip is, is find a way to defend yourself. If you don't have a gun that fires sticky grenades, yeah, big stick. Mm. Big stick might do. Do they have a big stick? Well, no, because you get a pistol. Why would you be messing around with a big stick, Jim? That's ridiculous. Locals, I guess. They don't seem to be too badly hurt. I know I hope they'll be able to... Nailapta! Whoa. Easy now. I come in peace. I assume. So I'm armed? Yes. I'm breathing. Right. I'm functionally immortal. Yes, What's hopefully. What's the next step? All right, well, I, you know, it's, you could go it alone, I suppose, but my tip would be maybe to make friends with some of the aliens. You are human. Yes, good. You're way ahead of me because I don't know what species you are. Right? The ones that I'm not shooting. The ones that you're not shooting, yeah, okay. obviously. I mean, you shouldn't shoot just everyone you see immediately in the, the game. diplomatic approach. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. So how am I going to diplomat with these well, aliens? See, here's the thing. Um, you don't want to be the kind of person who, you know, like those expats who move to Spain and they don't speak Spanish. They just speak English, but louder. You don't want to be an ignorant You don't want to be that guy. Yeah, you don't okay. want to be an ignorant tourist. Exactly. So um, the problem is, is that uh, the aliens speak a totally different language. Rude. Most of Rude. Them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. The expats coming out. <laughs> um, Meha Hatso Kalo. Yone Yinat Agazorp. Well, I guess this conversation's going nowhere. But fortunately, by a, by a twist of fate, or uh, possibly not a coincidence, yes. uh, some of these aliens, mm. uh, mainly sort of scholars and religious types, speak English. Speak the Queen's English. Well, they don't call it that. They call it Agakamon, and it's this sort of lost ancient language. But it sounds like But English. it's exactly English. You, you speak Agakamon? Yeah, I was trained to speak 14 languages, but I've never heard of them. <laughs> All right, I speak Agakamon, sure. Yeah. Convenient. It's very convenient, but for the rest of the aliens, you're gonna really struggle to understand them. Mm. In the early part of the game, at least. Hey there. Do you understand me? How me? Ted yo ha zon uyun zark. Some things might happen during the story that allow you to converse with more of them. Um, Babel but, fish. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically it's a Babel Something fish. Something in your ear. Story. Yeah. Um, but what's quite cool is that, I mean, this is a, a lore dense game, right? There's a lot of lore and a lot of alien words to keep track of. One of the things I really like is that in the subtitles, if you have the subtitles switched on, the sort of really important words are kind of highlighted. Mm. So it kind of reinforces their importance and helps you remember them. Um, but there's also this really cool sort of smart glossary feature, which means that when a cutscene is playing out, you can hold the right trigger button and it will put up the relevant words on the right hand side of the screen. So you don't have to remember what was said and then go into the glossary. It just tells you right there and then. So, I mean, yeah, try and make friends with the aliens. If you can learn the language, if you can find a, a, some sort of English to alien dictionary or Babelfish, also useful. So I would, you know, focus on that after you've armed yourself. Damn it. Damn it. Where the hell is he? What happened? You disappeared for a complete moon. Really? Felt like minutes. I must have taken a little dimensional detour or something. So. This is the place. Sounds like I have everything I need to survive the first night. Yes. But I've seen the 50 Martian. 50% chance. Yeah. I've seen the Martian. I yeah. need skills yeah. that are going to keep me alive 
for a substantial period of time before NASA comes and rescues Indeed. me. Indeed. So what, what do I got? science that S. Yes. Yeah. Uh, developing your skills is super important and is my next tip. This is basically an RPG. Can right. we grow potatoes? Yeah, I mean, that's... Out of human waste. That's not an option. Ah, <laughs> you can try, I it's suppose. It's not on the skill tree. You're telling me that's not hey, on the skill tree. It's not one of my tips, but definitely like indulge your hobbies if that's what you want. If you want to grow potatoes out of human waste, absolutely what go for it. What else can I do? What can I do? Uh, well, it's an RPG, so you do have a skill tree. So in addition to being able to modify your weapons, you can also modify yourself and your own equipment and things like that. <laughs> the first uh, option you get to, to upgrade is an upgrade to your jetpack, right? Fairly straightforward. You sort of... Jetpack? Yes. Excuse me? Yes, I did bury the lead there somewhat. You've got a jetpack. Um, cool. It's super useful and great. Um, but basically, uh, your first upgrade is, uh, is sort of doubles the amount of capacity of the jetpack. So it immediately doubles your ability to move, not just for exploration, but also in combat. Right, the next one you unlock, the next jetpack related skill you would unlock, is this thing called Jet Sprint, which I absolutely love. Uh, which is where you sort of boost and glide along about like, I don't know, maybe three inches from the ground, like a sort of jet-powered lawnmower. Whoa, keep your balance, Slade. Um, and that's a, a way of getting around the place. I think probably, again, like sub tip, maybe, I don't know, try and work out how to fashion some sort of crash helmet from, a, from an alien coconut or something, because it looks dangerous, but it's a lot of fun. And I am functionally immortal. Yes, well, yes, you can crash into whatever you like. But yes, it's an RPG, so obviously you've got the skill tree. There are also other little sort of RPG touches around there. One of the things I really liked is there is a foraging system. Like all good <gasps> RPGs, I love there's a, a foraging, foraging system. system. What yeah. are we foraging for? Berries? Well, yeah, little berries roots. and things like that. And you can kind of combine them to create a series of potions that will help you out in combat. You know, buffs, okay. health boosts. Okay, crafting, that sort of foraging. Thing. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to simply, you know, ignore the, the immediate threat to the planet and just go around picking flowers, that's also an option. Yeah, that's your prerogative. Now, Mike, mm -hmm. should I build myself a little hut and sit in it forever? No, Jane, no. I mean, not if you ever want to get off this planet for a start. You're going to have to explore your surroundings, oh. discover things, <laughs> you know. But my hut. <laughs> it doesn't have Netflix. It's unlikely oh, to have Netflix. OK, fine. I mean, one of the, the key appeals of this game is, is exploring the world of Adelpha, right? I think the thing that surprised me most uh, going into this, not knowing tons about the game, was uh, how sort of lush this, this sort of world looks. It's all sort of verdant jungles and, and things like that. And, you know, the early part of the game is very sort of jungly. And then you head to sort of mountain ranges and, you know, sort of more deserty areas and, you know, sandy beaches and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a huge open world to explore. Absolutely massive, actually. Um, and one of the really cool things about it, and I think this is uh, one of the things that's a throwback to the original game, is that this world is, you know, entirely explorable on foot, right? So okay. you can, it's that classic video game thing of, if you can see it, you can go there. You can jetpack to it. Unless it's a spaceship literally in orbit. But otherwise, you can get there on foot. And yes, as you mentioned, the jetpack uh, makes navigating that mm. sort of world a lot easier. So, you know, we're talking a lot of scale and things, like I said, sort of mountains and things like that. At one point, you've got to get up to a mountain village and you can either take the long way and, you know, walk up a road. Ancient altar, sure. I'll have a look. Or you can jetpack up a cliff face, right? So um, exploring is really, really good fun. Um, and uh, yeah, just it, I was genuinely impressed by how nice it looked. Um, uh, it, it's a very, very pretty game. Very, I, I know that the people who make the game aren't going to be able to make this comparison, but I probably am allowed, uh, which is it really reminded me of sort of Avatar, you know, that kind of like lush, you know, jungly sort of alien planet stuff. So all uh, it's a very colorful game. Okay. And, you know, getting around on foot is is great fun, uh, but there are also, obviously, this being a large open world game, 
fast travel points that you can unlock. And they're actually like part of the story and a kind of physical thing that you sort of activate these, these kind of portals to get you around. You can either wander there on foot, by jetpack or via fast travel. So it's up to you. How are you feeling so far about your survival? Good. Percentage is going up. Next tip, avoid dangerous wildlife. Now, you don't want to be going around bothering the local fauna mm. because you're, you're on an alien planet. You don't know whether Can it's- Can I shoot it? I mean, yeah, you can shoot it, obviously, if you okay. like. That kind of, that ties into point one okay. about defending yourself. Okay. But I would say that you can always leave it alone as well. Well, almost always. I'll leave it alone um, if it leaves me alone, Mike. <laughs> yeah, there's some really sketchy looking stuff on this alien planet. Uh, Delpha is the name of the planet. That what, what kind of wildlife are we talking well, about? Well, my least favourite, I would say, is the weird tentacle things that come out oh, yeah. of the water and oh, spit yeah. acid or something. Yeah, sounds bad. <laughs> So they look pretty grim. Um, so yeah, and the problem is, is when you're in water, you're probably usually moving a bit more slowly. So you're a bit of an easier target as well. So I would avoid those things. I will say, as I implied earlier, it's not always possible to avoid the wildlife. There was one mission in particular where I'd sort of fished this giant mystical silver sphere out of the bottom of a lake and I had to transport it uh, to a local village. Now the transportation method was punching it and shooting it and jetpacking into it and kicking it along like a giant football, which was not what I was expecting, but it, but it was fun. Yeah. Physics are always fun. Uh, the problem was the route that I needed to take with this giant football did take me past a sort of flock swarm uh, of horrible, hostile sort of bird-like things that were sort of swooping around the place and stuff. Oh, let me catch my breath. Every so often, you are going to have to kill some of the wildlife. But you brought your pistol. You brought your pistol, didn't you? You discarded the big stick, you brought your pistol. So you'll be fine. Cool. Slade de Liaz, you copy? I left Kizard before learning how to write. I can't copy anything, Ulukai. No, it means, do you hear me? Then I'd prefer if you just say what you mean. Okay, Jane, how are you feeling so far about your survival? Good. I'm spot? ready to go. You ready to go? Send me, yeah. Now, if you're gonna be here long term, I yeah. mean like, months, maybe even years. Okay. This is another, another lesson from the Martian is maintain a sense of humour. Mm. You see, because, mm. you know, while your physical well-being is extremely important, yeah. so is your mental well-being. Okay. Right? And I think one of the best ways to maintain your sanity is to maintain your sense of humour. Okay. Uh, and that's exactly what the main character of Outcast New Beginning does. Uh, Cutter Slade, even back in the original game in the 90s, uh, always had a sort of like dry, sarcastic wit, basically. This mission will be a snap, Commander. It's just a simple repair operation. What could go wrong? So he doesn't take himself too seriously. He's an ex-Navy SEAL, but he knows how to smile as well. Um, so yeah, he's, um, yeah, there's a lot of kind of funny lines and things like that. It's not all sort of po-faced, okay. serious sci-fi, okay. right? Think, Slade, think. What's the mission, soldier? Okay, don't panic. Jumping dimensions is supposed to fry half of your brain. Um, he'll make jokes and some of the uh, funnier exchanges come from the fact that he's making jokes and there's a sort of fish out of water thing where the aliens don't really understand the jokes and they take literally that sort of thing. I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of thing. I won't scratch you, Ulukai. But yeah, by and large, he's a sort of upbeat, um, uh, sarcastic, doesn't take things too seriously sort of character. If you're trying to buy me, add a foot massage. My boots are killing me. That's sarcasm you can't fake. Commander Cutter Slade, it's really you. Um, so yeah, he's kind of fun to be around for the duration of the game. And I will say that this is not just a survival tip for being lost on an alien planet. It's apparently also a survival tip for making a video game because apparently when this game was originally being made during the pandemic, okay. it originally had a sort of darker, grimmer sort of tone, okay. a more kind of serious tone. And I think because everyone was in lockdown and things like that, uh, apparently they decided to make the world more colorful and more upbeat because they were kind of missing that sort of outdoorsiness and, and stuff like that. So Aww. apparently this could have been a much darker sort of 
grittier game, but actually it's colourful, it's got humour, that sort of thing. It, it's a sort of almost a, a response to those kind of more dystopian sci-fi yeah. futuristic games. Like saying the pandemic, not so bad after all. No, that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. You see that? Yeah? How do you turn it off? Huh? Goddamn savage. Speak! Okay, last survival tip. Yes. You ready for it? Yes. Last survival tip is, remember, man is usually the biggest monster. So, obviously, when you arrive on a Delpha, mm. and uh, the immediate threat presented to you is a sort of robot invading force, who are stripping the planet of its natural resources, and they're uh, enslaving the sort of the aliens, the talons. Well, they sound like pretty big monsters. Yeah, well, this is it. And, and they're, they're who you'll be shooting at a lot during the early part of the game, which okay. is good because they explode real nice. But I don't think it's a spoiler to say that actually the real threat is humans. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. It can't be. It's revealed probably 11 minutes. But I'm humans. Well, this is it. It's going to make it really awkward, isn't it? Because you're out there trying to make alien friends. Uh -huh. And all the people who look like you are real jerks. Oh, I thought I was abandoned on this planet alone. No. Now you're telling me there's other stinking humans yeah, here. Yeah, other stinking humans. <laughs> real jerks. Rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones you're trying to get away from <laughs> when you marooned yourself on an alien planet. Right. And they followed you. Right. Humans. Invaders of my people. But no, yeah, so there are, uh, are other humans uh, around and they are bad humans, bad sort of military Ooh, humans. humans. Ruining it for everyone. Indeed. There is one character in particular who is a turbo jerk. His name is General Burham. Wrong answer and wrong freaking language. Again. <laughs> He's a sort of military dude. The, mercifully, for the first, uh, for the early part of the game, at least, uh, he's up in space, on a spaceship, so you don't have to look at his face very frequently. But um, he is there torturing aliens and generally mm. being a jerk, being mean to his like crew, stuff like that. You're the fleet negotiator, and you still haven't managed to communicate with a single prisoner. Yet you keep assuring me these primates are intelligent. You're taking over their land. Just because they don't welcome us doesn't mean they're stupid. So he is the sort of chief antagonist, at least in the early parts of the game. I haven't finished the whole game, but you wouldn't want it spoiled anyway. Um, so yeah, he's, he's a real nasty piece of work. But I will say something reassuring to you as part of this final survival tip, which is you're not the only human who sympathizes with the aliens. There are some other humans within that military organization who are sympathetic to the aliens plight and will be helping you out from afar. So you're not going to be all on your own trying to survive. You might have some buddies, some human buddies, in addition to your alien buddies, who you've made friends with. Nate. My father executed four prisoners today. Four. Just because they won't tell him how to access that damn island. He has no choice. What we need is on that island. I'm the negotiator on this mission, so let me negotiate. We don't have to torture them. So there you go, Jane. Do you feel more equipped to survive on an alien world? More equipped than ever. Send me today. <laughs> Send me up to space. Um, yes. Uh, if you would like to see how you would fare uh, in Outcast A New Beginning, there is a demo out right now. Do you remember when demo... I mean, this may be a throwback to the original game. Do you remember when playable demos existed? No. 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 No, I'm far too young to remember that. Does it come on a disc stuck no, to the front of it, something? It's available to download right now <laughs> on Steam, okay. on Xbox, on PS5, on the PlayStation Store. So, um, yes, if you'd like to check the game out for yourself, demo's out right now. Uh, give it a go. Thank you so much for watching this video brought to you by Outside Xbox and sponsor Outcast A New Beginning, which is out on March 15th on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. We'll see you next time.